I think most of you know of like there's a lot of different cameras where DSLR like I think few years ago they started at the full frame camera which is the 35 mm full frame sensor. So do you guys know what's a full frame and what's an ADS-C? Full frame means like uh, normal like when a camera 35 mm is a full frame where you can see a full frame, a 35 mm full frame. It's a 35 mm full frame, and APS-C is actually it's a prop sensor. It's more zooming. You you won't get it that wide. Some filmmaker when they use cameras like uh, a FS5 or FS7 because those are crap sensor. So when they choose their lens, they need to know. So for example, APS-C, APS-C it's like 22 times 15 mm. So like example 35, if you use a 16 mm lens, it's a 16 mm lens. You will get a wide shot. But in APS-C, every lens you use, for example 16, you have to times 1.5. It means what you are getting is from a 16 times 1.5, and which is 24 mm you won't get that white anymore. So people need to know like what kind, like do you need a fish eye lens or do you need like that white or something, like something like you need that white, white angle lens and like you need a white shot, but the white shot, if you only have an APS-C camera, then how you gonna do that using an APS-C? You need to use a wider lens, maybe a 10 to 18 mm lens, those lens and you have to know like what kind of camera you're using and what kind of lens you're using. For a, for a shoot, you need to know every shot. You yourself know like what kind of lens you are actually using. For example, you're seeing a wide shot. What kind, like this wide shot, you, you might use a 24, you might use a 35 or a 50. That's the maximum. You won't use an 85 on a wide shot. You could, but you will be standing very far away. But people will know, they should already they know like, why shot? What kind of lens are you using? A close-up shot. If a close-up shot, you are not using a 16. And I know that if I know most of you know like lenses like 16 to 200 or something like that. The face, you know, you change right. The wider, the closer, and stuff. That's why if you are going to someone so tight, so tight, and you're using a 16 lens, you'll see that person is like. Their proportion is different. It's like they are a bit, their face is a bit wide. That's why if you want to use that normally, they how do you use it? They use a longer lens. Maybe a, normally what they use is a 70 200, which is a zoom lens. They step far away and they take their clothes off. Normally, those they use it to do uh, OTS. OTS means over the shoulder. Those are, those are keywords for those terms like OTS, C close up the CP and something like that, okay? So what what is the benefits between like using these kind of cameras? You're using like the shadow depth of field, getting more bouquet. Bouquet, you know, everyone knows what the bouquet is. Bouquet is something like shadow depth of field. You in photography or in video so like something sharp and there's a that like in oh. front here. You can test it out using your own eye, like just put something right in front of your face and you can see there's a bouquet, something like that. Where those people, when people see that it's a bit more like a cinematic, filmic look. Okay, so uh, if you guys want to test out of this camera, you can test out later how to set your camera. Normally when you set this camera, you need to set your white balance because you don't want your white balance to be very off. When normally you use a white balance, you use a white paper. So set everything to manual, set your white balance, set aperture, shutter speed, and set your ISO. So for example, you are shooting a 25 frame per second. How many shutter are you gonna use? Anyone? No, 25 is uh, shutter speed. Means there's a 25 frame per second. Hello? I'll wait for some seconds. 25 frames. So in, in video, you guys actually, this is very important and you need to know like what's 25 frame per second, what's 50 frame per second, what's 120 frame per second. 
25 frames per second means there's 25 frames in one second. So in that 25 frames, your shutter has to be doubled up of that number. Means if you're shooting 25, your shutter speed should be at 50. If you're shooting at 50 frames, your shutter has to be 100. And if you're shooting 120 frames, then your shutter should be at how many? Yes. And then when there's more, like there's more shutter and that, you'll look, you'll get, you'll get darker, which is getting more like low light. And then where you, you need to have more lights on it if you are shooting a slow mo. Example like last last uh, last class I just showed you all like how they want to, they shoot a product shot. Why do they need so many strong lights on their product? Because they are shooting a thousand frame in a second. One thousand frame in one second. Imagine one thousand frame in one second and their shutter how many shutter is that? 2k shutter. It's very fast and when it very when the thing goes very fast you need a very strong light to go in before it. If not you will see there's a line because of your shutter. It's like taking a photo. Taking a photo sometimes you take a photo in a very uh, low shutter you can see the sensor which is covered. Correct? Correct enough. Yeah, it's a very basic thing. Or sometimes if you see those, even lights could actually make things which is you will see uh, what they call it as flicker. Do you know what? Do you know why it's flicker? <coughs> you know why it's flicker? Listen. No. Flicker is uh, what do you see when it's like you see your camera. There's a, there's lines going down here. Those are called flicker. Sometimes it's because of your shutter speed, which you put it wrongly. For example, you put a uh, 80 shutter in a 25, sometimes you see there's a flicker. But sometimes, if you shoot in a place where uh, there's light, because lights have voltage, they have different voltage, and voltage will actually sometimes cause you flicker. Even if you set it correct, where, where you're shooting like a 25, your shutter is 50. But when you put it to your shutter to 40, and the flicker is gone, because of the light voltage, that's why some that's why industry they always use in a way professional lighting because professional lighting they their boats are the same and they won't affect your flickers and stuff. LED most of all most of it won't, but sometimes it will depends on the environment. So this is how you're gonna set your camera. Go to manual. Set movie exposure, manual, everything has to be not sharp and not uh, contrast, like sharpness, contrast, saturation, all that has to go down. You know why? Because when you film something, you have at what they call it like raw. Raw, if you've seen a raw file, it's very flat. You, you, it's better everything to be flat, what you're shooting. So in your post-production, when you're going for your editing, when you bring up your contrast, you bring up your saturation, those are when you do that during post production, not in the camera when you that is. Because for example, if your camera you are shooting a very contrast and saturate uh, video, and then when you put in post production, when you bring down the saturation or bring down the contrast, you will actually lose quality. Because if you shoot everything in low contrast, low, those are in a way it's all called flat profile. I, if I brought my camera, I can show you like, uh, there's, they call it like PP, PP1, PP7. When there's no PP, it means it's a, it's a, it's very hard, hard contrast, very hard sharpness, very hard saturation. But if it's uh, like PP1, PP2, normally like industry, we shoot at least PP6 to 7. Because those are, those are very flat profile. So when you bring it into like editing, you put a lot of it, then you color it, then you bring your contrast, and then how you balance it. If you, I, if you don't believe me, you can even test it out. You shoot one which is very strong, then you put it in editing, and one is very low contrast, very low saturation, then you put both, then you pull it. You will see, you can make it like match both, like as, like almost the same, but you can see the difference between the quality. One will be drop, like very, 
you will see it, it's very fake now. In a way, it's spoiled. So <coughs> there's NTSC and PAL, PAL. What's the difference? So NTSC is shoots in 30 frames per second, 535 individual scan lines. PAL will have 25 frames per second, which will have 60, 635. So at the NTSC, there's a, they, they always has a 30, 60, and 120 frames. And PAL, there's only 25, 50, and 100 frames. But there's a difference because uh, you all have seen this before, the PAL and NTS, NTSC. No. Uh, it's in this, uh, every camera, like for example, a camera that can cut video. Every camera has that. So what's the difference between NDSC and PAL? So PAL, PAL uh, they say they have a better quality and a better picture quality than NDSC. NDSC, okay. So it's like uh, normally industry, like uh, for example, like uh, commercial use or anything, they always use PAL to shoot it. They use PAL because they're, they're I'll tell you later because of uh, NTS, NTSC. Paul, uh, like I work in the industry last time, we in Reservoir or work in Genie Boy, so we all always shoot in PAL, 35 frames or 50 or 100. Because NTSC, there's a color problem. There's a bit of color problem, but it's not, it's not very obvious, but it's very, in a way, <coughs> to say that uh, NTSC and how the difference is uh, e and uh, NTSC uses as actually they use it in uh, how is it, uh, TV TV how they shot it using TV to <coughs> put it in TV that's why sometimes when you use your camera to shoot on TV you can see there's the, the flicker you will see flickers through like lights on the screen, even on the laptop or something like that, you will see lines. So always maintain stable, stable. It depends. It don't. It doesn't have to be always. For example, Emma, when I read, uh, when I when you told me your idea, I can see that your you produce a lot of uh, tripod, monopod, mm -hmm. but also a lot of handheld. Handheld, how you use handheld also you need to be smart because like for example like your fighting scene and all that you need action when you fight for example you see an action scene both of them fighting both of them fighting you you put a camera placing on there just shooting them fighting it's not interesting if you're moving a camera or some shape shakiness then that's a different like a different feel how you want to tell your audience about those that's why when you work on that story you need to know like do you need uh, a slider do you need a tripod do you need like a handheld do you need a gimbal or anything those stuff you need to list it down for your shoot or anything and uh, always at three points contact those are equipments where you can have even like this kind like last time how we shot where because this kind of feel will show it more raw, like how people does handheld, like handheld feel, and you don't want to have your shakiness. Because for example, like now I'm holding this camera like that. I, if I hold it like half an hour or one hour, I, of course my hand will be shaking. But how if, if you want to take a shot where it's not so shakiness, how how do you achieve that? Normally, no. If like that. If you have that equipment, it's different. Like if you have just a strap. The last time, how when I was shooting an event, we need to do handheld. Normally, how we do it, you hold it like this. You pull this, then we hold this. Your arms like that. So it's more, it's not shaky. So you point, you go, you move this stuff. You can put it up here, you can put it down here. This is how you do it. There's some people they want to do it in shakiness where they. It depends on how you hold it sometimes because some they do shakiness like even floating. You know how floating is? A lot of people nowadays even film film or series they use a lot of uh, what they call that uh they they yeah, just use some word that it was uh, 
Oh, the movement would where uh, the movement where you hold your cam, like you hold a camera or you hold a steady, steady cam or anything, but you float it. It's called floating. Some cam, some people when they put their cameras, they shoot like a OTS. Then the director will ask them, give me a bit of float, because if you see a screen where these two people, like one people, like uh, two people are talking about the OTS of that person, it's a very static shot. If, it's, if the composition is very long, sometimes you'll feel bored. But there's a flow, sometimes for our eyes, I'm all like, it feels comfortable. So, I, there was one time where one guy, he's a very fat guy. He has a, like a very big tummy. And he puts the camera on his tummy. And he has a very good flow. Even the TV say, even the director of photography said, I couldn't get that flow. I don't know, I don't, not have that summer. <laughs> the guy just breathe in and out and just flow. And floating is not like how, it's just like putting camera here and there. You have, you have to learn how to float. How do you float, for example, an action scene, not action scene, like a movement scene, like that person comes in and walk down. There's different kind of floating. Some people just float it naturally. Some people does it following. For example, this person go here float. When he sits down, he'll float down, follow him. Then he stays there, he just put like then the floating will be a very soft floating. When he moves, he follows. Because he's telling you the story and he follow he's actually using it to make your eyes to follow what he's showing. So this is a black pen and a gimbal, which is a, I don't know any of you seen this before? So this, like a Ronin, that's a Ronin. Uh, this is stuff where you can get very smooth shot, which is something like that. So right now, wants you to think about a quick test or quick comparison mix between the Glock and the AC2000 and the Ronin Man. There's always a question of which one do you go with. My bet, for right on the gate, get this guy, if you can afford it, get this guy. So we're about to try it out and see which one can get the better results. See, that's a black hand, and that's a Ronin. So you see the difference between black hair and running. So black, I have a black hair. My and then I have I do not have a running, but I have a gimbal. But my gimbal, I wanted to bring it to show you guys, but unfortunately it has a problem. I have to send it to China. It takes ninety days, so that won't happen. <laughs> so uh, like black hair and running. So <coughs> normally in black hair they actually. Some they, if you know Devin Supertram, he's a glycan king. He comes out with all these glycan glycan shows. You can see it's not so smooth. It's not not smooth. It's not as in a way how to say it, it's not very robotic when it's like a running. A running it won't jerk or anything. Even if you are moving like that here, here and there, because look at the glycan. If you move to left or right, you follow your movement, your body movement. For Rune, it's more like you're following the Rune. So if you want to get a very smooth shot, for example, your story about the father, the family table, you want a very strong, like smooth shot going in. Of course, it's a Rune. Using a Rune or a uh, slider or something. Like that. But normally, yeah, you, they will use a slider. But if you do not have a slider, you have a Rune, then you, are, you need to use a Rune. 
So those are shots that it depends on whether like the story that you will need that does it bump up your video quality? Does it show it a different way? And also like light time and loading when they use that is very good for post production. For example, you want to do masking, you want to do a wall. For example, this computer you shoot one thing like here to that, then you want to do a masking using this computer for next like a transition. If you do a masking and if you use a handheld to shake and that, it's very hard for that person to comp like uh, do the masking and everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what's masking? Block the light. Uh, masking is uh, in After Effects or in a lot of software or in Final Cut also, it's like uh, mask, for example, in this computer, you mask this thing out, like Photoshop, you press and then you you create that mask. Yeah, yeah it's exactly like that, but that in animation. In animation means, for example, you have a video, you want to mask this bottle. Mm -hmm. So you have to mask this bottle frame by frame. There's 25 frames per second, means you have to mask that 25 frames. I did uh, my first project at the time, I, I shot one was a uh, car hitting that person, and that person flew. And my first time of doing that masking, and that mask, it's, uh, it's like a how many uh, seconds? Four seconds, and I'm doing frame by frame for that. And it's a bit tough that time because I was still new. It took me like six hours, six to seven hours to do that three seconds. Yeah. But after I've been doing that more often, then I feel more of a, like easy to know what to do. Sometimes when you know what to do, you will get the fastest way. So that time I did one masking. It was a bit tough, but yeah, it took me like just two, three to four hours. But those are tough masking. You need time, passion. No, not passion. I mean, you need <coughs> that time where you can sit on your desk for a very long time. So we should write up. <coughs> this is uh, one of Jason's slides where he said you need to choose a we should writer. But yes, a we should writer, but not a wet pose. Because you can't save a wet pose also. You shoot too dark, it's too not like uh, you lose quality. You lose quality in too bright and you lose quality in too dark. And how do you see that is based on the camera where you can see there's a point where it shows zero, one, two, or zero, negative one and two. So if you see zero, negative one, you have to bump up your ISO or do your lighting through your environment. So like normally when we shoot, even if it's zero, we are trying to put into plus one. So it's brighter. So these are the lens. Like if you are if you are willing to invest like for lenses, those are lens for a lot is for photo and video. It depends on what kind of lens, but if you are a videographer you always need a very like a close a uh, tech lens, a white lens. Some people like what Jean Genie Boy started with just a 50 mm lens. And how he, he told me how he shot last time was using 150mm close up, go closer. Why shot go, go far, far away? That's how he does it. With a 50mm. Those are prime lenses. Prime lenses means it only stay in 1mm, which is like the 24mm, 16mm. Not prime lenses, it's like the 1635, the 24-105. Like this is not a prime lenses, this is a 24-105. It's not prime lenses. And why, what's the difference between prime lenses and those, like these kind of lenses? Like these kind of lenses, they have their maximum, like their maximum is uh, their aperture go highest, it's just f4. Some 